Hey guys, your boy T Chinese Man. Welcome back to another Let's Talk Football Analysis video. So today we'll be we're gonna be talking about another World Cup match, but today I'll be analyzing the match. So if you guys really enjoyed this video, please hit that like, subscribe, and share this video so I can get 1,000 subscribers. But other than that, let's get into this video. Portugal and Uruguay faced off yesterday. And <laughs> I'm, I was a bit surprised, but Portugal managed to win by 2 nothing thanks to a Fernandes double, even though I thought the goal should be given to Ronaldo. But XG suggests that Portugal and Portugal and Uruguay should have dropped 1.33. As you can see, XG over here, 1.33, 1.2, 1.27. But what were the tactics used? Let's dive into let's dive into it and check out. So first of all, we're gonna check on Portugal. Okay, we're gonna check on the on the ball metrics and off the ball metrics. And just to remind you, Portugal line on the four two three with Felix Ronaldo Fernandez up front. Uh, the midfield was still the same against uh against uh against uh against uh, Ghana as well as the back line. So other than that, let's get into the analysis. So Portugal used a variety of shapes on the ball, okay? We'll start with the shape over here. So from the match, I always see that Ruben Neves always tends to drop in between the centre-backs between Ruben Diaz and Pepe. As he has a very good on the ball metrics, okay? He's better than the, goal play, than, the, than the goalkeeper here. And yeah, he can help progress the ball up. While the two other midfielders such as William Cavallo and Bernardo Silva who are quite good on the ball. Okay, Bernardo Silva, no doubt, is William Cavallo the, the bit of the problem. So yeah, they tend to drop deep to help to assist. At times, I also can see Fernandez also drop deep to assist while the wing backs it, such as Lula Mendes and Joao Cancelo uh, push forward while Felix and Ronaldo push forward. But... Problem with this shape is that Uruguay actually countered with a back five, you know, like a very, 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 very mid block, quite like a very, very low mid block, which actually could, which is actually quite, quite irritating. So Santos uh, adapted. So this time the shape changes. So now Ruben Neves is actually starting, uh, starts with Cavallo in the pivot while uh, Felix stays wide. Do the madness uh, from left back, he invert into midfield. Uh, Bernardo Silva starts to go up higher. Ronaldo stays central. Fernandez stays wide. Uh, Joao Cancelo also hugged the touchline to you know provide a, a wing back or uh, crossing opportunity. Yes, he provides a crossing opportunity. So yeah, this shape is more effective as it was actually quite evident in the second half itself. So this is how Portugal's first goal and they are cast out one of their big chances, all right? So here... Wait, sorry. So here in the ops, instead of that one, okay, it was again. It was I think that was Cancelo. Yes, that was Cancelo who who stay white. Fernandez also stay white. No wait, sorry. Uh, Rafael Guerrero. Okay, because Nuno Mendes came off injured, so Rafael Guerrero stay white. Fernandez came to assist Rafael Guerrero, making it like you know overload the the left side, and that caused you know the entire like the midfield and the back line of Uruguay to be attracted. And we all know the Fernandez passing ability is no doubt very, very high quality. So use that high quality to pass it to Ronaldo, which of which eventually leads to the goal, which is becomes 1-0. Uh other, so now we talk about the, the defensive phase, okay, off the ball. Okay. Portugal tend to uh stay in the 4 3 3 like this, you know, and press they press more than Uruguay, which is a good thing. Uh, winning back the ball, yeah. But however, this pressing chain was kind of a bit ineffective, all right. As the white wingers, okay, as the wingers were too uh too central, yeah. I need to emphasize the fact that Uruguay had our uh, uh wing backs on the on the on the white flank, so pressing like this could be a bit ineffective. But soon uh Santos adapted and then he changed the 4 2 3 1 system of pressing with Felix and Fernandez uh, moving deep, covering the flanks. So now, if we, if we have Uruguay only have one wing back, it will be 2v1, which is actually an advantage. Bernardo Silva pushing up to the center attacking bit, which actually helps to cover the pivots, along with William Cavallo and Ruben Neves. So this is this is quite an effective strategy, which helped Portugal win. But now we have to talk about Uruguay. Yeah, Uruguay on the ball and off the ball. And just to remind you, Uruguay line out in 3-5-2, okay, with Nunes Cavani up. Uh, Benteke starting in the midfield uh, along Valverde, Golden, Jimenez all starting in defense. Well, let's see what they did on the ball. So, 
sometimes, okay, we look at this shape first, all right? This shape of here where my mouse is. Let me just get my annotator, okay? At times, Rochard here, if I pronounce that right, because I'm very bad at pronouncing names, he tends to go long to Cavani here, yeah? Because Cavani, he, he's a good... He's a good uh, target man, all right? He's tall enough. And sometimes we saw Darwin do this, you know, making the runs over here, which is effective. Uh, Oliv the wingbacks in Oliveira and Varela uh, always push right, while Bentica and Vecino stay wide, you know, they provide a passing option, which could be effective, while Valverde provides, provides a support system, which very, very which could be effective, you know. But at times, we always, Roger always, always goes high, always goes long, right? He always goes long to either Cavani or either to Nunes because they're tall enough. But generally, uh, because of Portugal's 4 3 3 initially, okay, Uruguay pressed Uruguay. Um, uh, eventually, you know, they took advantage on the white on the white wingers, yeah. So the tactic is to you know they 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 kicking long balls, the crosses, sorry, crosses into Nunes Cavani, who is tall enough, but unfortunately they couldn't make the most of it. So yeah, that's the one. That's the bad thing. That's the bad thing, all right? So now we have to look at the defensive phase, all right? Let me just clear all the drawings first. Ah, okay. So now we have to look at the defensive phase, all right? So the times, okay, initially, initially this shape, okay, uh, Uruguay uh, set in the 5-3-2 mid block, which very, very annoying, okay, as I reinstated that Portugal had to, you know, use that, tactic of using uh where uh six attackers which was effective in the end thankfully so initially this was a shape but eventually Uruguay started to press more being Pentaker Bentaker being the lead presser from midfield yeah he'll be the so-called initiator of the press so yeah this could be effective especially when going up against the back three which is obviously a good thing which is obviously a good thing now let's look at but let's just look at their biggest chance, right? Rugo's biggest chance. So as you can see, Cavani has dropped deep to assist in the midfield and, and you know, it assist them in the defensive phase. But as we can see, Metica actually managed to press uh, Bernardo Silva. Is this Bernardo Silva? No, wait, that's Joao Felix, sorry. I pressed Joao Felix into losing the ball. And as a result, look at this. Uh, Rugo's were very, very good uh, on the counter attack. Yeah? So that was the main plan of the of the attack. When they counter like this, and the end, they almost they almost got a very very good chance, but they just couldn't finish it off. So overall, Santos and Alonso were very very close, but unfortunately, uh, San uh Portugal managed to pull it off. Okay, I gave Santos an eight out of ten stars. Okay, he managed to adapt, uh, do well in the you know the attacking phase. All right, he managed to get them to win the end. So yeah. Uh, Alonso, he gets five, okay? I mean, at first, he set quite deep, which is not very ideal, but then he started to pick up the press, okay? He initiated more pressing, but unfortunately, he couldn't make the most of it. But what do you guys think, okay? Leave me down in the comments. Uh, get get creative, you know? Make more make more noise in the comments. Ask, why is this? Why is that, you know? Uh, so we can discuss this whole community. It's about football. So thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like, smash that like button, subscribe. I uh, hope we get one thousand subscribers, so I can so I can succeed. I'll see you guys next time. Always stay happy. Goodbye. <laughs>